Morning, thanks for joining us on this Friday here on The Wax. You're watching Eyewitness News at 7 o'clock. I'm Caitlin Nuclo. And I'm Nicole Nalepa. Happy Friday, folks. We have a lot to talk about, but first, let's say hello to meteorologist Scott Gagliardi. And Scott, it is hey. really nice out there. Oh, it is. It, what a difference a day makes, yeah. right? Minus is, the fog, though. Minus areas, the right? fog. There is some fog, but it's pretty in spots as long as you're not driving through it. Here's a nice shot of that fog in New London. Our iCam does show it off in the distance there. Temperatures. They're not bad out there. 63 degrees, those calm winds. Uh, visibility is certainly the issue in some areas. It's not widespread, and it's actually been getting better compared to what it was just an hour ago. You saw Danbury just lifted up. Now they're up to a mile. It's improvement, slow improvement, but we'll all get there by later on this morning and especially into this afternoon. Wind speeds, they're calm everywhere, which helps that fog form, but that will also be picking up a little bit throughout the day today. If we zo uh, zoom out a little bit in terms of looking at the state of Connecticut and areas across Southern New England, you'll notice it's looking like a good day out there. If you picked today to maybe get a four day weekend out of the holiday weekend, it's an excellent day to do so looking like a top 10 day out there. Temperatures climbing, comfortable humidity levels. But other than that, we do have some showers in the forecast. To let you know when you can expect them all coming up in just a few minutes. Good morning, Caitlin. Hey, good morning, Scott. Good morning, everybody. We're clicking over to 702 here on your Friday. If you're heading out, maybe you have to head to work or bring the kids to school here this morning. Majority of the state uh, in terms of those drive times and speeds looking pretty typical. Actually, we're seeing some normal delays 95 southbound New Haven to the George Washington Bridge, uh, but 91 and 84 moving along. We have no construction set up, no crashes, no major incidents, but we are still dealing with a little bit of fog depending on where you're traveling. You can see, however, we are improving in other spots here in Hartford, 91 North and Southbound, looking good. Uh, seeing a slight improvement here through Middletown along Route 9. You can at least see part of that pavement there above uh, or below the fog, I should say. Still dealing with that foggy condition, though, in Waterbury, 84 East and Westbound, and seeing some of that sun peak through here in Meriden, 691 East and Westbound, but it's going to be a very busy day on the roads. I'll have much more on that and the airports as people uh, head out for the long holiday weekend coming up in uh, just a few. I'm Caitlin Francis with your Connecticut Chevy First Alert Traffic Report, driven by your Connecticut Chevy dealers. All right, thanks, Kate. Now at almost 7.03, New Britain police are investigating after they say the driver of a van collided with a motorcycle last night right near Corbin and Black Rock Avenues. Crews brought the motorcyclist to the hospital, and we're still trying to learn about their condition, but we will, of course, be sure to share that information with you as it comes into our newsroom. And we're still working to learn more about another motorcycle crash on Route 2 in East Hartford. The wreck happened near Exit 2 last night. Crews brought one person to the hospital. We'll bring you details as soon as we have them. A man accused of horrific animal cruelty could soon face even more charges in Wolcott. Police say Jose Sullivan dumped a dog on the side of the road and then sold puppies in a Walmart parking lot. We first told you about the dog back when someone found her in April. Wolcott Animal Control workers then reunited the dog with five of her seven puppies. Police say Sullivan is also under investigation in Waterbury. Right now he's not allowed to have any animals as the case plays out in court. And now at 703, uh, summer is right around the corner, which is great and means ice cream trucks could be popping up in your neighborhood. But that also can create a safety risk for kids. So today lawmakers are meeting to talk about expanding Tristan law to other states. The law requires ice cream trucks to be more visible. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Olivia Schuler has all the details about this special push for safety. Lawmakers say these safety measures will save lives. That's why they want to take Tristan's law nationwide to protect children when around ice cream trucks. Tristan's law was signed into Connecticut law in 2021. The law requires some of these upgrades to an ice cream truck. That includes red flashing lights on the roof, convex mirror on the front hood, front crossing arm attached to the bumper, and a stop single extending horizontally. The law is named after Tristan Barhorse, a 10-year-old Wallingford boy who died in 2020. He was struck and killed by a car while crossing the street after buying a popsicle from a truck. His family now advocates for ice cream truck safety and education. On a national level, Tristan's law would set aside 1% of the funding provided through the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's National Priority Safety Programs for states that adopt laws that increase safety of ice cream trucks. The U.S. Department of Transportation would also be required to study the problem and find solutions to help improve safety. As we inch closer to summertime, this law serves as a reminder to make sure when you see an ice cream truck that they're following Connecticut state law and keep an eye on your little one if they run outside to get some ice cream. In Hartford, Olivia Schuler, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. And the time right now, 7.05. What we're seeing out there in some spots is a few areas of some patchy fog. It could 
give you some issues if you're heading out towards maybe work or school this morning, but just leave it a little bit of extra time. It's not too widespread, just a few isolated areas. You can see some of that in Waterbury where it is currently lifting out of there. temperatures about 61 degrees. Winds are calm and there's going to be a lot of sunshine today, so make sure to Leave some extra time to get outside. It's going to look good out there, especially later on this morning and into the afternoon. Temperatures are a bit cooler than where they were this time yesterday by anywhere from 5 to near 10 degrees, giving us readings right now in the 50s and lower 60s. Right along the shore, I'm looking at those middle 60s. The warm spot right now, New Haven at 67 degrees. The chance of wet pause. We're good for today and tomorrow. Maybe an isolated shower on Sunday, but we leave more chances for showers on Monday. We'll time all those out, though, coming up in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Scott. Now at 706, it has been five years since the disappearance of Jennifer Farber Dulos, and our loved ones say that they are committed to keeping her memory alive. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Marcy Jones live in West Hartford with the details on how the new Canaan mother of five is being remembered, and this is a somber day for so many. Even though Jennifer has been gone for five years, she has certainly not been forgotten. Take a look behind me at this growing memorial. You can see that friends and family have left flowers, candles, and ribbons. Her family says they're committed to keeping Jennifer's memory alive, especially for her five children, and remain hopeful that one day her body will be recovered. So much has happened since May 24th, 2019, the day that Jennifer Farber Dulos went missing. Her estranged husband, Fotis Dulos, the main suspect in her disappearance, took his own life in 2020 after he was arrested and charged with capital murder and kidnapping. Earlier this year, his girlfriend, Michelle Draconis, was convicted of conspiracy to commit murder, hindering prosecution and tampering with evidence in connection to the case. On behalf of her family, one of Jennifer's best friends released a statement Thursday morning saying, in part, there are so many daily reminders of Jennifer, a shared reference, a musical riff, a delighted laugh, a graceful silhouette in the distance. Her strength of character, her intelligence, and her tenacity live on in her children. She would be so very, very proud of the young adults they have become. Michelle Traconis will face sentencing next week, May 31st. In West Hartford, Marcy Jones, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. All right, thanks, Marcy. Up next